Well, hello, welcome to Literary Life, and welcome to my channel, and welcome back for all of us, because it's been a while, and I did not even realize how much time had passed, and uh, a couple of you reached out to me, and I was like, wow, it has been weeks, so I am so glad to be here. The good news is I have been reading. Um, I have just been living life, just focusing on making some big changes, work-related changes, and that has just taken a lot of time and energy as I went on that journey. Um, but reading has continued, so let's finally reconnect and talk about some really great books. This is video is going to be a review of six books that I have read. These are not books that were part of the multiple subgenre literary journeys going on, so I have updates on those as well that you will be seeing this week. Um, on separate videos. So let's get started. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My book reviews are spoiler free. I give every book one to six stars. One star, I did not like the book. Two stars, eh, it was an okay book. Three stars, it's a good book. I liked it and I recommend it to some people. Four stars, it was a great book. I just absolutely loved it. And then five stars, I really am trying to reserve now for those more special books that just really blow my mind. And I do just want the whole world to read them. So let's get started. Um, so the first book was one I actually got from uh, About the Stories, I think it is. It is a subscription service. This is a small indie press. I really have been diving into the indie presses and their publications. So this is a brand new release, and that is Stay With Me by Han Orstavik, and I'm probably mispronouncing that. This book is in, um, originally was in Norwegian, and it was translated this year and published by About the Stories Press and Other Stories Press, excuse me. And um, this book is going to really explore how love is intertwined with insecurity and in some cases even violence. Um, we're going to focus on our protagonist, who is a Norwegian woman who is living some of the time in Milan, some of the time in America as well. And she lost her husband about a year ago, and then she's going to enter into a very tumultuous love affair with a younger man. What's interesting about our main character, um, Judith, is that she's actually had a couple of relationships. And the way that the book is structured, I would describe it almost being snippets and we're gonna explore snippets in her the current life she's in but also go back in time and learn about her past relationships and the people in her life through those snippets so I really just I had to really focus in but the writing is beautiful um, the translation, not speaking Norwegian, so not having been able to compare. I found um, the translation is an English reader to be on the English reading experience to be very well done. So she was married in Italy to, I would say, really the love, the one of the loves of her life that um, unfortunately the, the man became ill. So this book in past. And so we are going to see her experience of grief. But I think what is incredibly well done in this story is how we're also going to get snippets back in time to her childhood and we're going to learn about her the dynamics that were present with her parents maritally as well as in their parenting of her and how the dysfunction that was present in her original family um, kind of led her to engage and be in the relationship she is in as an adult and most importantly the current relationship she is in what's very tumultuous with this younger man. So I really liked the way the author structured that, how we got to know um, her and him through these snippets, thinking back of him and then going back in time and we get to see the moments that they're together. I did struggle though um, with really feeling like I knew the characters well, which seems almost dis accordant with what I just said because that where I'm talking about this pathology and how I thought it was really great the way that it was laid out but I still it was a really bizarre experience and I would be curious if any of you else had experienced this as well when reading this book I, I just felt like I never really got to know the characters and I found that just so baffling 
And what that did, I don't know if it was the writing style, if it was the way the book was structured and we were moving around frequently, but I always really felt distant from my characters and from what was happening. So at the end of the day, as I finished the book and I thought this was definitely a really good book, I landed on a three-star read for this book. Um, I will be putting up this copy in my Penguin shop, link below if you are interested in checking that out as well. Um, then I got a book from the library and now we're gonna talk about The Life Impossible by Matt Haig. So this was another new release book. Let me see if I'm gonna turn that a little bit so the glare is not on it. And um, I absolutely loved The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So I, had, I was on the wait list for when this book came out. This book is set in an island that's near Spain. I, thought, I think it's called Ibiza. And so it's in the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful, beautiful location. And our main character is a retired school teacher and she <coughs> is a widow and she's gonna inherit a house from a really, it's an interesting situation because it's not someone she was particularly close to, but a fellow teacher years ago that she had shown an act of kindness to. And so that other person, um, she had gone off and uh, left the area, the two had not kept in contact, but um, that person had left a home on this island to our main character, Grace. So Grace decides she's going to go ahead and go, <coughs> excuse me, to the island. And that trip is going to turn into, um, it's going to go, I would say, from more of a general literary fiction type style of writing to definite magical realism woven in. And it really is peeled back and rolled out, I would say, layer by layer by layer. So the things in the beginning that are magical or more fantastical elements are very subtle, and then they become really the plot part ingrained in just the main theme of the book. And I just want to highlight that because I think if you're not used to reading magical realism or fantasy, it's important for you. I think you can enjoy the book more knowing that this is going to come later in so it just doesn't catch you off guard and feel bizarre. Matt Haig's writing is just incredible, a beautiful writer. There is just a quote here that I absolutely loved when I was reading it. It is impossible to feel life so deeply and not want to protect it. And that quote really captures what's going on in the book because there is essentially a threat present on the island to um, not just Grace, but to a broader community. And this book is very much going to be about understanding and flushing out that threat and then countering it. Once Grace arrives, this book, like I said, is just going to continue to build and build, but I would call it a slower, medium-paced book. So I just want to caveat that as well. The chapters were very short, I felt, um, so that definitely helped the pacing. But overall, I found this book to be more like maybe if you are going to a European island or in particular a Spanish island, it feels like it almost parallels the speed which which people live very different than in America, and it's good to slow down. So I almost thought in a way that this book had a leisurely quality to it that actually invoked the experience of the location, so I thought that was kind of cool. At the end of the day, I thought this was a three-star read. It was a solid, good book for me. I didn't love it as much as I loved the media, the Midnight Library. That may have just been due to pacing, um, because again, this one felt very leisurely, but I think that there are just, just a simple beauty in the story itself with a twist, definitely due to that magical realism. All right, so then after that, I read, I that's the same book. Oh, this one, we're going to get into a horror book now. Now, this one actually I had not <laughs> put on my, my subgenres because I don't think it really fit any of the subgenres, but it was a new release horror book and it had caught my attention. So I said, I'm going to get it from the library and I read it and that's why it's here in this video. And that is Sleep Tight by J.H. Marker. He is the or author or she, I'm not sure, of Mr. Lullaby. I have not read this author before. This book is going to take us to Montana, a state in the northern central United States. 
And we have a serial killer, a horrific serial killer who was convicted, was on, um, received the death penalty. And in the beginning of the book, it begins with his being executed, his being put to death. But that is going to be followed by a series of crimes in child kidnappings that um, are really are going to be tied very much to not just the investigators in their respective families, communities um, that were responsible for the capture and conviction of the original serial killer, uh, but also to the, the nature, the very nature of the crimes themselves. What's really interesting is our main character is a female detective named Tess Claiborne. She is the daughter of one of the investigators, detectives, who is responsible for that um, conviction. And we're going to get to know her, her work partner, um, Danny, who is also a best friend. Now, Tess is going through a difficult point in her own life. Her and her husband are separated. And Danny and Tess, and Tess is or estranged husband, Justin, and Danny's wife, Eliza, or Eliza, who is a social worker, the four of them are a very tight-knit friend group. And I thought that was really a cool component to the book. In fact, I could have even enjoyed it being flushed out even more and there being more history to their friendship, getting to know the characters perhaps before the upheaval came their way. That's something in particular I always enjoyed about like Stephen King's book. I felt like I got to really know the characters. But this book is going to begin, boom, right out the gate, moving fast in action. So simultaneous to explore, exploring the action, we're going to be getting to know the characters. So I think it's really good for people that like a faster paced book. I would say that this one definitely falls more into that. And yet there's enough character development. It's some of it. So for those of us that like to read a lot of literary generalized fiction and really look for these well fleshed out characters, you're going to get a good enough amount of it here in that fast pacing. This book is going to be um, interesting. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I'm sure that's so helpful. But what, what I mean by that is that it had some really unique elements to it. I didn't feel like it was a retelling of the same sort of crime. So I liked that, that part of the plot very much. But I did find that I had to actively suspend disbelief, just like force it really early on. There were just conversations that would occur. Um, Danny, in particular, uh, was allowed to investigate when he had a very personal connection to the victim. And it kind of felt like, okay, this shouldn't happen when it normally be allowed to happen. It was a conflict. You know, it wasn't really realistically addressed in like an excuse given, a like rationale given for it. So I found a lot of times, you know, the FBI was involved, yet they really weren't. And it just, it didn't feel realistic. Yet the plot itself and the story itself was fun. So I said to myself, you know what, let's just, let's put all that reality to the side. I think this can be a fun ride if we just suspend that disbelief. And it turned out very much to be the case. So I just want to caveat that to you. This is going to be one where you're really going to have to say, well, that would have happened. And just keep reading. Uh, there's a lot of people and moving parts to this book. And that was really interesting. It moved the pacing along, but also I think tripped the book up as well as you come toward the end. It just felt so complex and it felt like uh, there were a lot of these moving parts that just were kind of then not resolved. So that for me took away from this becoming a four star book and definitely just I landed on this is a solid three store three star horror read. Um, so if you're a horror fan, I would recommend this one. If you're not a horror fan, but you're really looking to dive into some of the really good horror, I would probably make other recommendations. But if you like thriller, you like horror, definitely, definitely read this book. And there are some creepy elements to it for sure. All right, we're going to stay with the horror genre because there was an Irish author. <laughs> this book just came out and it is by Sophie White, Where I End. <sighs> wow. Okay, let's talk about this book. So we're going to be in an island here off the coast of Ireland. So I love that we're getting a couple islands in this in this read reading group. 
Our main character, I it's it's Aileen. I think I I hope I'm pronouncing that at least close to how it's really pronounced. She lives in a house with her grandmother and cares for an, a, a person, a thing that they call the bed thing. Like that's in, like that's literally what how they refer to this person. And the bed thing is a really bizarre sort of component to the story right out of the gate. The other thing is that Aeolene is very much feared and rejected by the community on the island. And we don't fully understand in the beginning where this is coming from, but as we move through the plot, through the story, all of this will become more clarified through these series of events. A woman, um, a single mother artist, is going to come to the island. Her name is Rachel with her infant for a month's stay. And Aeolene is going to really just kind of become very captivated, almost obsessed by this woman and just get really overly attached. I'm going to say, you guys, this book is creepy right from the beginning. There is a sense of the bed thing. And what is this thing? Is it human? Is it not? If it is human, it's disturbing how it is treated by Aeolene and her grandmother. So you're just, you're constantly just un settled the author is does a brilliant job of just telling a very 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 creepy creepy story and um yeah it is it is just it's one of those books that i want to say it is not graphically violent per se but there are moments um of it being very violent or unsettling but not uh, Stephen King. I've read uh, some Stephen King lately, and so maybe that's why he's so on my mind. But I'm going to say not in that type of way. This is a very distinct violence, and it is almost more mentally traumatic reading about it. And it's so unsettling. Like, it really just, it's just like simple acts that just get to you and stay with you, and you're never going to uncover it. So I'm going to say this is more of an insidious horror, in my opinion. I really absolutely love this book. The dynamics between the characters um, is really well written. How the people respond, even if they're not um, a central character, the people are so present in the way the author writes that they make such a mark on you as the reader as you're moving through the book. And all of Aileen's, we are in Aileen's head for the whole book and her way of thinking, her psychology is just uncomfortable. And um, this is a really good book. I gave it, I tend to give whole stars and I settled on four, but I honestly think this is maybe for me a four and a half star horror book. I <clears throat> think I'm going to read this one again. I am, you know, horror is not one I like to read over and over again because of the way it makes you feel. <laughs> That's something I, I, for me, need to do in doses. But this is one, I think, due to the setting, due to this author's writing, um, is it's just one that I think is a book that when I'm ready, maybe next Halloween, I'll pick up and read again. So where I end, I um, have canceled several of my book subscriptions due just to the book log and the overspending on books that was continuing to happen on my end. So you don't see me unboxing Aardvark, but just FYI, if you are subscribed to Aardvark, um, this was one of their selections. So opportunity to grab it through them. Okay, the final one was in one of my final books boxes for my Book of the Month Club subscription. <laughs> And that is The Wedding People by Ellison Espick. Now, this book is going to take us to Rhode Island, which is a state on the northeast. One of these days, I'm going to blank when I try to do this for people that aren't from or familiar with the U.S., but it's on the northeast part of the country. And you guys, I, I just want to caveat, you know, the thing, and I, and I, many of you may or may not realize this if you've not been to the United States, but this country is crazy huge. 
So we are like 13 different countries all in one. So when you go from like the other areas we've been like to where we go now, Rhode Island, these are very distinct culturally, the language, the dialects, the accents, um, all and people even use different words, even though we all speak English. It's just such a unique environment. So I really encourage you to explore the settings. I think it's such a fun way to get to know um, parts of the world that we can't physically explore. I do that all the time. So anyway, now we're going to go to Rhode Island. And a woman's going to travel to a hotel in Rhode Island where she has made the decision um, to end her life. And we are going to learn about all of the things that she has um, been hit with that has led to this decision. And when she gets to this very fancy hotel, she is going to be the only person there that is not part of a wedding that is going on. It is the wedding week um, for a bride and groom and their family and guests who are all present and have all taken over the hotel. And our main character, Phoebe, has been allowed to make the, re the one night reservation um, by mistake, essentially. And what's going to happen is that in the, once she arrives, her and the bride are going to cross paths. And in doing so, a series of interactions are going to begin between them, which is really going to pull through the plot of the story. And despite the seriousness um, of our main character being in such a difficult, um, heartbreaking period of her life, there is a lot of humor also woven in this, and that just speaks volumes of this author's writing. I fell in love with this author's writing. I want to read her other books. I added them to my want to read list because it is just so well done, very engaging, um, great use of language. I love the characters she developed, all of the people. Um, good and bad traits, so just an interesting, just great, great character development. I love the dialogue. It was so witty at points, and everything was just so heartfelt, and it, it just incredible writer. And um, what's going to happen is the woman's experience with not just the bride, but with a handful of the wedding guests is going to continue on, and this is going to take place over multiple days. And it's just going to be life-changing for multiple characters in the book. So it is such a, it is just such a great, great story. And I highly recommend it. I settled on four stars. I absolutely love this book. In an effort to not hoard every book I love, because my library is serious, I am also going to put this one up in my Pango shop. So if interested, it will go there. So that is it for this review video, but stay tuned, guys. I will have updates rolling out this week, um, one on the horror and then one on the fantasy subgenres. And then right now I am working my way to wrap up my final book in the Poland subgenre. I don't even know if you guys remember me kicking that off. It has been really good. Um, so I'm finishing up that one, and I'm also working on the historical fiction subgenres. So those updates will hopefully be coming here soon. So that is it. Thank you as always for being a part of my literary life now. Let's go read some more books. Happy reading.